You know, I didn't really have an opportunity to stream this game because I was ill. Not with that, with something else, but I'm fine now. And Gears Tactics release here very, very shortly, like within hours of this recording. And I figured, why don't I just make a video and post that online? Because this is a game that I want to talk about. I want to show you guys. And I feel like it's been a while. So let's fucking do this. All right. The game's called XCOM Chimera Squad. And it is a turn-based strategy, something that I have fairly recently started to really get involved with. I've played uh, games like Felseal, which is Final Fantasy Tactics Reborn, basically. Uh, Card Hunter, I've talked about that a number of times. Funny enough, these turn-based strategy games always seem to land when I'm suffering from chronic pain <laughs> and stuck on the couch. And then here I am playing another one uh, over another weekend that I'm stuck on the couch. So yay, but it's good though, because these are the kind of games I really like to sink my teeth into and just, uh, you know, just, just, just start to customize your squad and really get into like editing your characters and kind of customize them however you want. And Chimera Squad satisfies a number of things that I enjoy about your traditional turn-based strategy. It also omits a number of things to kind of keep things simpler. Now with the, with the, with the price of $19.99, $9.99 at launch, um, well, it's really hard to really hold anything against them in terms of, you know, uh, missing features and stuff that you typically find in other uh, turn-based strategies. I should let you know, uh, I have actually not played enough XCOM to really count that towards my uh, my turn-based strategy experience. Uh, but I have played, like I said, a number of other traditional and non-traditional turn-based strategies. So I feel like I get, you know, I, I, I could speak you know, intelligently about this kind of stuff. Now, if you've played XCOM, you're gonna notice right away that there's a number of things that have been scaled down. But again, so is the price. So we should keep that in mind as we talk about some of these things, including the voice acting. Okay, so let's remember it's scaled down price, all right? I'm gonna give you guys a tour of this uh, this room first. So this is, is, this is basically your uh, your mission planning. Okay, on the right hand side you have a list of different uh, categories you could go to. You have assembly, city map, which is of course the city map. In XCOM, I believe you have a world map. So, like I said, scale it down. Uh, we'll talk a little about uh, about this more in depth in just a minute. Uh, we have assembly, which is where you could go through and uh, research upgrades and everything. You could see right here, uh, you have a three day time and uh, every single uh, mission or any kind of major event takes up one day, all right? So that's how they basically rate your time as you progress like through this game. Uh, and it costs you a certain amount of Illyrium. So there's there's three different currencies you're gonna get. You're gonna get Illyrium, Intel, and then credits. Now I should let you know, I'm playing this with a controller um, for the most part, but I am using the mouse to, to point out guys, uh, stuff for you guys. Um, but see over here, you have a ton of things that you go through and uh, and research. I've already researched a ton of stuff for my, um, uh, for my, uh, my squads. Or my squad, singular. Uh, actually, I guess technically, I think squad's plural because now I have two people going to spec ops. When you first start, you only get one. Uh, but yeah, and I have two people doing spec ops work, which is basically another way you could go through and farm uh, materials or mats or or whatever. We'll talk a little more about that in a second. And also training, which is where you send people to to unlock potential, right? Uh, or or you could remove things called scars. Okay, we'll talk about that some more in a bit. We got to talk about something here soon. Let me see. Jesus Christ. Uh, there's armory supplies. Supplies we. Go to buy stuff and then uh your investigation is basically the campaign you're working on from what i could tell there's three campaigns there might be a fourth it's kind of like a culmination campaign by the time this is done which i have a feeling is coming uh, i've already completed the first campaign i'll make my way through the second campaign uh and you know it gives you when you when you when you reach this point you, you can choose whichever one you want to start at right and so when you reach uh, the end of one they give you you start unlocking a bit more things so basically your tech starts to make us uh, more uh i guess a larger jump uh, you, you get to add more squad mates, stuff like that. And you can't just go willy-nilly, just go and recruit people. It's not like some, uh, like Fell, Fell Seal and, and other uh, turn-based strategies. You can just go and just get more and more dudes and just add a whole bunch to your roster so long as you can afford to hire them. In this case, they seem to just come to you just as you are completing objectives. Uh, training complete. So there's... There's just a number of things that I'm right in the middle of doing stuff. So uh, there's a couple of things that can be just, just kind of floating about here. So for example, training complete. Uh, if I click on training, it's going to show me that, well, there's nothing here. <laughs> the UI, by the way, is not that great. It's especially terrible on a controller, but I've heard it's pretty bad uh, for most people uh, using it on a keyboard and mouse. Uh, and then, okay, that's gone. All right, so that's somebody that's idle. So we're going to actually add this person to this torque. So this is my list of people that I have to work with right here. Uh, we're going to pop this up again. Uh, yeah, torque, cherub, terminal, blah, 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 blah. And each one of these have a different 
kind of class to them. Um, some of them are actually, actually, do I have any, I don't think I have any two that are actually identical in terms of class. Almost every single one is fairly unique, which is kind of nice. Uh, I'm used to, in some of these games, having a couple of characters that pull the same duties, so that way I can swap them out if needed. Like if one of them has some kind of lasting thing, like over so many fights, they, they, they lose certain stats or something because of something that happened in a particular fight, then I'll have them sit out and I'll have somebody else sub in that has the same skill set. But in this game, uh, it seems like most of these characters have gotten so far, and I feel like, you know, as I go, there's only so much room in this locker room, right? Uh, I feel like as I progress, I'm gonna find that there, there are gonna be some that'll be relatively similar, like maybe they have the same weapon, if you look at loadout, submachine gun, shotgun, submachine gun, enhanced pistol, assault rifle, enhanced pistol, and pangolin gauntlets, and then shotgun. <laughs> and they have a couple bots over here. Um, so you see, like weapon-wise, yeah, there's a couple. There's a couple similarities. There's only like four or five different weapon types. Uh, there's this everywhere. Everyone wears the same kind of armor. Mastercrafted body armor. Mastercrafted body armor. But da, 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 all the way down. Uh, they all have the same breach items, utility items, but they all do have their own individual skill sets that let them, you know, be unique. Uh, for example, with Torque, you look at the right-hand side here. Uh, with Torque, she has an ability called Tongue Pull which is a very, very cool way of, I think like scorpions, you know, get over here kind of thing, right? But you can also use it with your friendlies. And so because Torque is relatively mobile, she has a 12 in mobility. If we scroll through here, you can see there's 12, 10, 10, 10, 11, uh, 14. Now this guy's crazy, or sorry, girl. She's like, she's crazy with the amount of uh, ground that she's able to cover. Um, I haven't taken this guy out for a spin yet, but I can't believe his mobility is 12, Jesus Christ. <laughs> that just seems absurd. Uh, but anyways, you know, you know uh, Torque is very, very, very flexible, very, very quick, and able to get, you know, and able to get another person over there near her uh, if needed. And the reach on the tongue pull is just insane. And every character has like their own individual power. I'm not gonna cover every single one. This is not a crash course in XCOM, okay? This is just, we're just gonna briefly go over a couple things. But every single character does have their own, uh, you know, individual specialty. Uh, and you know that makes it you know it's funny because it makes you get pretty like once you get like a squad going that you can really kind of trust you kind of feel like oh, okay this is uh i'm never going to change a squad out again but then you find a reason to have to take somebody out of the squad for for something right and then you realize when you get somebody new in there you're like damn i've been missing i've been missing this this whole time and you, you start the same cycle all over again you build a whole new squad around this person you added and then later you realize you're like oh well this is uh <laughs> well, well, this 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 is uh, the best squad ever, and then you swap them out and you start all over again. Um, but one of the reasons why you might take somebody out is if we go over here to training. Uh, well, we can see first off, you can see uh, over here. Let me get my mouse. Uh, you see the little icon here? It's a little like red, kind of. Uh, it's like a, basically it's a scar, right? If you look at this right here, you can see this is basically this little icon right here. Um, whenever a character is gravely wounded, where they're basically in a down state during a fight. Uh, first off, you have to stabilize them because they end up bleeding out, and if they bleed out, and it's a character, well, it's, a, it's not a bot, I guess, um, then uh, uh, you actually fail the mission. Uh, I've actually not had any situation where I've actually permanently lost anybody. You do have these bots that you can suit up, but I've never had an opportunity to actually put them in a fight, and I actually have no idea how they work, and I'm not really worried about it because I am now 20 hours into the game. Uh, 20 slow hours, mind you, because majority of the time I played, I was on some kind of painkiller, so my... My talk about time dilation, all right? <laughs> I was moving very slowly playing this, but turn-based strategies are perfect for that. You can move super slow, your own pace, make it up as you go along, and it's awesome. But anyway, so I have uh, two scars on Zephyr, and Zephyr is my, like, you know, she really, really super crazy mobile, does tons of damage, just kicks the shit out of people. It's such a good character. Uh, but, you know, two scars, but the scars are, it's interesting the way scars work, because scars do not exactly, do, do not specifically take down, like, let's say, oh, all, all stats across the board, minus two. Not like that at all. They're actually very specific, so... Toughness, remove the agent's weakened HP scar. So in her case, she has a weakened, uh, she has she basically de depleted HP. Uh, and also, uh, their sluggish, their dodge scar. And with, let's say, uh, uh, Torque, the, the, the serpent, um, with her, I believe, her first scar is Will. And, and, and like, some of these things, it's like, you know what? I, I, I have a feeling I understand the methodology here. It's that sometimes you have battle scars and you just deal with it. And that's the way it works. 
initially I was trying to go through and clean them all up and I had them rotating out of training constantly to try to like clean them shits up. But then I realized it's like, you know what, instead of sitting here juggling people in and out of this thing constantly, I could one, I could try not to die so, die so much, but that's not, not terribly easy. Uh, or, or two, I could just let them have scars. Just let them have scars, so what? I could still, I could, I don't, it doesn't lock me out of anything. I, I, as For example, I have, uh, as if Zephyr needs it anymore, but I have Zephyr's mobility uh, being increased right now to two. <laughs> uh, because why bother cleaning this stuff up? Zephyr's all about mobility, getting in someone's face, and then punching them, punching them in the face. Like, just just doing melee damage uh, to as many characters, as many enemies, enemies as possible. And while, sure, maybe dodge and all that stuff comes in handy, weak in HP, sure, but the mobility is the number one thing. I don't have to worry about it. Uh, let's go to, uh, let's go to supply, <clears throat> see if there's anything here I actually need to buy before we get started. I don't think so. Uh, nah, not really. Not really. Let's go take a look at our armory here and see what's going on with our dudes. This guy here. This guy's my loop, my newest guy. Kind of like him, actually. I didn't think I would. Um, definitely a, uh, gunsmith. Or a, not gunsmith. Uh, <laughs> uh, a gun. Oh, man. Oh, man. Well, brain's gone. So, anyways, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, enhanced pistol, advanced stock, let's see, advanced uh, expanded magazine, and these are the types of upgrades you could get for uh, for these, uh, you know, for each individual character and their weapons and everything. A lot of them are just like small changes that are actually, they all add up. Like, it seems like, okay, so what if I miss a shot, I still do two damage. Well, the characters in, in general only have like 10 health. So, if I miss a shot, which is often in every XCOM game from what I've told, uh, and what I've experienced, uh, hey, you know what, doing an extra two damage, that's, uh, that's, that sounds great. And then, see, Advanced Expanded Magazine, it says clip size increased by two, yes, you do have to reload, and in some cases it actually costs you an action point, which we'll see when we get in. Uh, Breaching Charge, so this is something that was actually not in the previous XCOM games, and I have a feeling that they're basically debuting it here because they're going to introduce it into, the X, into XCOM 3 whenever that gets released. Uh, actually, I have to go back and play. Now, now that I play this so off, so much, like now I definitely have to go back and play the old XCOM games, at least XCOM 2. Um, but, let's see. This map is going to take a minute to explain, okay? So, up in the upper right corner, you have City Anarchy, and the way City Anarchy, Anarchy works is each of these individual cities has their own uh, Anarchy rating. And you can see like this one right here, it says, it says if you don't do something here, like for example, do this mission, uh, which depletes two Anarchy rating for this uh, for this one individual borough, I guess we'll call it, uh, then uh, then it's gonna move up. Unrest, that's what it's called, unrest. So if, it, if, I, if I don't do this mission here, it's gonna move up, and then on the next day, if I skip it again, then it's gonna contribute to my city Anarchy. Now there's a number of ways you can actually manage this stuff. For example, I have field team abilities, reduce city unrest. So if I say if I look at this and say, you know what, I have two, Two burrows here that are going to uh, you know get pretty close to, to to topping off, but this one's definitely going to top off. But we should take a look and see if maybe I need the resources from like this one right here has uh, what is this? Shock grenade, utility item, flex weave armor. So you got loot from this, and then 35 intel. Well, this one over here gives me one advanced auto loader and minus 200 and 60 intel. So I guess you can see more intel, and also it's not going to burst at the scenes if I don't go over there. So that's that's actually working against it. Maybe I should go over here. Uh, now something else I should show you, and I don't know how to do this with the uh, with the uh, the mouse and keyboard, so I'll show you with the controller. Uh, but if I go over here and I hit Y, or well, or whatever it is on the keyboard, I have no idea. Uh, this is your field team. Your field team is basically a passive way to get income and also remove district unrest um, over time. And you use Intel in order to research this, right? In order to unlock those things. Now I have 143 Intel right now. It's like I should go through and unlock one of these. Let me see where we at here. Uh, this one, uh, I can actually take this one up to. Now it scales, okay? You notice how this is 140 right here. And then, um, uh, but let's see, find another one that's a tier two. Uh, but this one is like 80 to upgrade, right? So it's it scales based off of how many you have. So I put security everywhere because I wanted to start stacking. Oh, whoops, cancel. I wanted to start stacking Intel because Intel is used to unlock these things. The more I unlock, the more of these field team abilities down here at the bottom, I get to unlock as well. So for example, let's go ahead and say reduce reduce uh, unrest. Let's go, we'll go ahead and do this one here. Is that gonna work? Let me see, I'll just select it with the keyboard because over the controller. Oh, did, it, did I get it? Oh uh, yeah, there we go. Boom. So now that's been reduced. I also have a, let's see, gain X situation words, uh, no valid targets. And then this one is reduced city anarchy. My city anarchy is pretty low. It's at basically zero, I think. I don't think that the flame counts as one. 
Uh, yeah, zero out of 14, so I'm good, man. I'm chill. <laughs> so I have to worry about that. Let's go ahead and go into... So now we've basically taken care of uh, that mission there, mission turncoat. Uh, let's go to the planning mission here. And uh, this is how we'll get in and we'll go start to play the actual game part. So it last, last chance uh, to go through and uh, put in some... Um, uh, to, to make some changes uh, and like i said there are these droids on either side but i've never seen them in the game i've never seen i don't even know how to summon them so hey if you got that figured out great <laughs> but i haven't needed to do that if i fail a mission because i lose characters or something um or because i have to you know uh stabilize them then i will just oh, hold on also presence Hostile presence. Uh, then I will just start the mission over again. <laughs> I'll just redo them bitches over and over again. All right, so cool. Here we go. The breach mode. This is this is actually really cool. Uh, being able to go through and open up into a map like this is something that I've not seen. I think in any other. I mean, Valkyria Chronicles maybe, but like Valkyria Chronicles is such a unique take on uh, on turn-based strategy that I don't even know if that really counts. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, being able to bust in, which you'll see in a second here. Actually, just going to take a look at this real quick. We'll talk about this too. Um, so first, <clears throat> this is an easy one. Uh, sometimes you see one that's aggressive and it'll say damage is likely because there's a couple of people, a couple of enemies on the other side of this door or the other side of this area, whatever, that are, you know, aggressive. And so they will attack you right after you attack them. Uh, in this case, it looks like, for the most part, we're going to be pretty much clean. Now, there might be more than one encounter. Actually, right down here, I encounter one of two. So we're going to go through two maps. So this is probably going to be a long video. But this is good because you need this. All right? You need to know. Um, let me see. So quick scan. First unit through its entrance is marked until the end of the encounter. Uh, good visibility. All units enter here get 25 aim during the breach. And then explosive entrance. All non-aggressive enemies guarding this entrance are surprised. You know what? I might actually just uh, put everybody over here on the wall. Let's go bust into the wall. Blue blood. We'll get them up there. Frozy. Everybody get up there, right? I think everybody... Oh, needs breaching charge. Okay, that's right. So that's that's one of the reasons why you have breaching charges. And then you want to have somebody that has uh, a different... Uh, you Basically, you want to make a squad that has a different kind of uh, breaching uh, utility or whatever. Some of them are keypads or, or sorry, key card hacks or something. Uh, there's a number of different ones you could use. In my case, I think I only have one one option. So yeah, <laughs> we'll see how this plays out. I should also note too, and we may we may or may not see it, but you know, in this group, I have you know, I have uh, you basically range DPS. I have mm, range tanky DPS kind of right. Lots of protective abilities like a paladin of sorts, uh, and then I have more mobility uh, DPS, and I also have another. Uh, uh, item on her that will allow me to not have my weapon firing uh, and my turn, which is something that the other ones will. If I fire a weapon, it ends a turn for some of them, but for her, it does not. And that's a weapon add-on that I actually put on. And then over here is my healer down at the end. Healer and support. So for the most part, she ends up staying back and doing stuff. But at the end of a mission, or sorry, between encounters, she can actually heal up her squad before going in, and you'll have a drop-down menu for that. So we may or may not see that later on. All right, here we go. Let me see here. So I have a couple options. Super slow-mo, 75%. Now, it doesn't matter how long I sit here. It's always going to be here. It looks like the characters are moving for like a brief minute, like they're kind of like leaning out or whatever, but they don't ever come out. Uh, let's see. So this guy's got breach fire. He has a special ability here, actually called Lancer Shot, which will ignore any kind of cover, which is nice because now I can look at any one of these enemies and say, okay, which one I want to try to maximize my damage on. Now, just because it says that I'm going to do four out of seven in this case, right, doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to do four out of seven. There's going to be armor and all kinds of other mitigation, and everything involved. So, like for example, this guy here says uh, acolyte. Hey, it says uh, surprise, and you're going to do five out of five, right? Well, let's find out. I'll be damaged. It's five out of five. <laughs> well, okay then. Uh, moving on. So let's see. This guy's got cover rush phalanx. So phalanx is just basically it makes people attack him. Um, let me see. It's like a taunt of sorts. It looks like probably his best bet for this guy is going to be well the trooper. We could take care of pretty quickly. Let's get rid of this resonant though. Now these are all like psyops. So you're gonna there's gonna be a couple of characters probably that have some kind of like you know. Uh, mental abilities or something, levitating, stuff like that. Basically like biotics. Let me see, uh, what do we got here? Cover rush, toxic greeting, we could poison somebody, which is kind of nice actually, which you might go ahead and do that, especially over here. Maybe this guy, maybe this guy over here. Yeah, we'll work on that one. Start chipping away at that. Blast the poison. 
right through that window. Didn't even break it. Isn't that crazy? And then breach fire, and then maybe we could get this hit on this resonant here. Done! Oh man, clean entrance! Now you don't get to choose where they go after this point. I'm sorry, uh, immediately following the breach. They just kind of go to the nearest place and then just kind of, you know, they just dip behind cover. Uh, there is cover that you can see with the, uh, uh, with the shields. And the shields will be, you know, quarter full, half, half full, or they can be, let me see if I can find like a wall, for example, they'll be full, full. Now you can rotate the camera like this if you'd like. Um, let me see. So this one I have to locate the encrypted blueprints, clear the Illyrium refinery, upper left corner by the way, collect the evidence. And I have three rounds remaining. And I've never had an issue where I've run out of rounds actually. I've done pretty good at uh, keeping that in check. This guy is poison right now, so he's eventually gonna get uh, done in here. Uh, see, we're playing blue blood right here. Blue blood's got a dead eye <clears throat> ability that does not, does not remove his uh, uh, ability to, to take another shot. So as long as I don't move him, I could shoot twice. So let's go and do that. Two there. That was a miss, actually. See, that's where those two damage comes in handy. All right, let's go do it again. Fire weapon, dead eye. Let's see, maybe we could get him this time. Come on, 41%. There it is. Unconscious. <gasps> Why unconscious is not dead? Because he has a tranquilizer uh, bullet uh, add-on on his weapons. And that just allows him to... Uh, subdue somebody without necessarily killing them, which could add up and give you some intel for a maximum of, of I believe, 20 at the end of every match. Uh, and I say a maximum of 20 because I don't think it was said anywhere, but I, I, I just learned over time that no matter how many people I subdue, it's always 20. It's like, you've subdued 8 people, you get 20 intel. You've subdued 18 people, you get 20 intel. It's like, all right, dude. Uh, let me see, this guy's still gonna be chipped away. Let's see, kinetic shield, charge bash. Does he have any charges? Let me see. He says on the left hand side. Where is his uh oh weird. Weird usually there's a uh, there's something over here that would show it, but I don't see it here today. Uh maybe there's another area we can see charge. I'm so used to I'm not used to playing it so close to my screen. <laughs> Everything looks so different. Let's see. What am I gonna do with this guy? Uh, there's only two people left, so this is good. Oh, team up. Let's do that actually. Let's do that and let's get let's get him up. Uh, he's got, so he's gonna be the last, but team up basically just moves him to the next in line. And I still have an opportunity to take another, another shot. So as long as I don't move, and that's the beauty about this, you know, it's, it makes sense in, in a tactical based, uh, strategy game. Um, tactical turn based strategy game. Uh, it makes sense that when you get a good, good positioning, you don't necessarily have to waste so much on, uh, so many action points on moving. You just basically get, get that good positioning and then just start chipping away at people. And that typically ends up working out for the best. Like, that guy had two health anyway, so even if I missed, it wouldn't even matter, so. Uh, and he still has another shot. Look at this, man, man, we're just clearing these guys. Oh, <gasps> ooh, one damage on missed. Oh, but poison. Enemy activities, one guy, one guy left. He's gonna die after this turn, so I, maybe I should just ignore his ass. There is somebody sit hidden there, though. I didn't see that. This guy right here, huh, huh. Hmm. Let's go and get some better position. Let's go and get it. Actually, we'll go and get uh, right over here. Just go ahead and take it. Pop over the chest, take it. And then we'll clear it out. Let me see. Uh, bind, tongue, pull, open, close chest. This does not use an action point. Let's go and use it. We could leave if we want to, but we're going to go ahead and uh, finish this guy off, I guess. Not unless we really do. I could subdue. What would it do with the uh, oh the hitman? Oh, interesting. Yeah, let's try that. Oh, you know what? Probably because it wasn't uh, wasn't visible to any of my characters. Should have squeezed you unconscious. I should have. Jeez. Jeez. All right, let's go and get better positioning here. Like right here. And I had the vol I had the volume down a little bit. I'm gonna turn it up some. I had it down because sometimes the game gets pretty loud. Turn up a little bit. I had the vo I turned the voices down, which is actually super needed. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna fish this guy off. Then we gotta take care of the hitman. These hitman are, um, yeah, they're they're pretty difficult to deal with. I mean, okay, obviously there's the uh, the, the stealth thing, which is new. Is that still? Oh no, he went Overwatch. Overwatch is basically means if you move within range, he's gonna shoot you, and that's it. A lot of times, you just basically ignore it. Let me see. Does he, does he have a good shot? I think so. I'm going. 
Give him a good clear shot here. Oh yeah, pretty good. At least I don't think he really has anything else. Nah, not free reload, throw smoke grenade, not worry about any of that stuff. <laughs> I guess he couldn't lean around the corner. <laughs> uh, can you hit it from here? You could do this, you got this. See, I had faith. I have faith. All right. So Cherub actually just grant, just got a, uh, just gained a, uh, a boost, a charge there for completing the round. What's nice about those charges, you can really build them up and unleash, like basically a shockwave type ability uh, that does some serious damage. And obviously it's a conal attack, so you actually do a number of, you can actually uh, take down a number of, uh, of enemies. And what's cool about it is, after I, oh, something I didn't show you guys, each, each character has their own tech tree. It's pretty basic. It's like one option, two options, one option, two options, like that all the way down. But one of the options I have for him was I've gone through and uh, I made it so that whenever he, whenever he takes somebody out using his charge ability, he gets a plus one charge per enemy he took he takes down. So you basically build up a bunch of charges, go in, shockwave like two or three dudes, and then you get those charges back again, and then you have him just go nuts on somebody else. It's awesome. See, all units at this entrance get uh, plus 50 dodge for one round. Cool. Well, they're all going through, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And then here, I think now you'll be able to see a terminal. Yeah, there you go. So breach fire, fire at hostiles uh, during breach or refresh. Uh, I, I think she still gets a breach fire, but I, I, we'll go ahead and just do uh, the refresh anyways, even though we don't really need it. We only have, uh, I think this torque is down like four health or so. <laughs> Woo! That's louder. All right, here we go. Breach mode again. Acolyte. Well, Acolyte is, uh... Surprise, I guess. Breach fire, take it down. I, I do have to say, this sound, uh, even though I, I'm gonna bitch about the, uh, the VO, because the VO is, the voice actor work is just, it's, it's, it's 1999, right? It's not that, uh, it's not, it's not a very expensive <laughs> collection of, uh, of voice reels, but the overall sound design is sweet. Let me see. Breach fire, cover rush, toxic greeting. Let me just go straight attack. 66%. Well, 100% with toxic greeting, though. I don't know if I want to waste that. What do we have? Oh, there's trooper up here. Trooper's actually alert. Yeah, we'll go and get him. There we go. And then uh, we still get breach fire, so. We'll just go ahead and attack. What? It's only a couple dudes? Oh, okay. Now, he fired back, I'm guessing because he was aggressive, I didn't even notice, but I'm guessing it said aggressive, and that's why he was able to fire back. Number of folks at range, that's why we didn't see them. Take it and run. Take it and run, what is it? Uh, acquire the encrypted blueprints, got it. Now, do I have a good positioning already? Can I just start taking shots? I think so. Let me see. Let me subdue this guy, now he's at range. Let's go ahead and do this. This is a fire weapon, we'll do dead eye. 60%, please. Okay, well, we can do it again. Barking at me, look at this guy. Try again. Dead eye. This time we got him. <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot of enemies. This will be a good fight. Maybe. I don't know, I'm pretty good at this game. I might not be that might not be that good of a fight. Oh. Necromancer. Reanimated. Oh boy. So, if we take out the Necromancer, as you can expect, that will be the end of... Let me see, where's that? Of those, uh, of the zombies. Let me see. I do want to try... I have one charge available. I can't charge bash that guy down. Let's see. Fire weapon. I don't really have anything else I could do. How about we just get to better position and then... See if we can't snipe a couple of these dudes. It's not the best spot here, okay, but I'm he does have a clear view of the area here. Cobra, Necromancer. There we go. So let's put all of our all of our focus and fight into that Necromancer there, and then miss just like that. Fifty-eight percent though. That's expected. Let me see. Tongue pull, maybe I can pull that guy. Oh, yes, I can. 84%. That's good enough. Yep. Now I have a choice here. Camera work, let's go. I have a choice here. I can shoot 
I can just shoot in the face, or I can bind. And bind is pretty awesome because bind will just let me hold on to this person forever, which is really great at disabling some fairly strong smaller characters. Obviously I can't do this to like a giant mech or anything, but smaller characters I could bind them up pretty well and then just hold on to them and every turn I could choose to bind them again and just continue to squeeze a life out of them. The only problem is of course that it ties up Torque from being able to do anything else. Now I do believe I can also, let me go, I'm just gonna shoot him in the face by the way. Um, I do believe I can uh, upgrade that to do more damage. But I don't think I, I don't think I did. Actually, I did a good amount of damage there. Holy crap. And actually, she has another shot. So maybe we go and bind her now. Bind, and then we bind her the next turn and we get it back. Not a bad idea. But we should probably want to finish it off because the, um... Oh, I don't have a choice but the bind. Okay, cool. Oh, that's right. The tongue pull did cost one play. One, uh, action point. Please miss. Or not. I don't know. The camera does weird stuff, man. I have no idea why it does this. The camera just, like, that, that, that's definitely a complaint that I have. The game's not perfect. The UI needs work. The uh, the camera, like, is constantly pointing at, like, random stuff. It just makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, let me see. It's Terminal's turn. Terminal has taken a little bit of damage, but overall is fine. We do need to get over there and get these things before we get reinforcements. In every single mission, there are reinforcements. I don't think I've seen one time where reinforcements did not show up. So let's go ahead and give... Um... We'll get a chair of a turn. Get him uh, moved up here so we can take a shot at... Somebody... No? Okay. Let's do this then. We'll do charge bash against anybody. Can't reach. Okay. We'll do connect shield then. Connect shield on... Terminal. Yeah, terminal. There we go. Now I'll be able to take one more shot. And actually, let's go ahead and use terminal how we, how we should. Safeguard or oh, blue blood. It's gonna blue blood. So basically it's gonna restore four HP and give plus twenty defense for blue blood here. Good. And she's also protected from another kinetic shot. So if she gets shot at, it'll get soak it right up. Woo! Immune to poison. That's what I like to see. There's poison on the ground, though. You can see it there. Uh, let me... Should I hide behind this red barrel? <laughs> this gets a better positioning over here. Let me see. Dead eye. Hmm. Oh, 41% chance to just take him out completely. Doesn't always work that way, of course. What are you aiming at here, bud? Oh, over here to the right. <laughs> like I said, the camera can use some work, man. Let's hope for a crit. Nope, there's three dudes right there. God, if only I had a grenade. What is the camera doing over there, dude? Get over to the right so I can see what's going on. Chair of poison. All right. Let's get Cherub out of here. Let's hide behind the barrel. <laughs> Let's just stand right here in front, man. Uh, actually, can he, if from here he probably can. Let me see. Not where I'd go. No, we're not gonna mess with that guy. Charge bash. Still can't reach. Okay. So let's see. Free reload. Throw a smoke grenade. Fire weapon at Cobra. Oh, here we go. Barrel. Perfect. Eh, did okay amount of damage. Nah, nah. nah. Oh, we, we switched already. Let me see. Sustained bind. This will take out the Necromancer. And I'll take out the Psy Zombie. Great. Nice. This is actually a very easy mission. And I, I do think it's because I've, I've gotten to the point to where I have uh, have most of the mechanics figured out and everything. So every mission has been relatively easy. There's a couple of like boss scenarios that will definitely not take any prisoners. <laughs> but for the most part, it's been pretty easy. Now I say that, something's going to happen here. Let's go ahead and try to take them out. 61%. Look at that. This ain't no XCOM game. 61%. Boy, I really likes this over here. I wonder why. Kind of move it back? I guess not. Not even the mouse. All right, blue blood. This is your time. This is your time, bud. OK, 
Okay, we're gonna we're gonna definitely take this guy out, right? <sighs> God, why do we want? Probably because of armor or something, right? Okay, it's time for sure, right? Dang. It's always on the second shot. Chad will be fine. He'll be fine. And then let's get better. If you actually, maybe we could do a charge bash on this guy, which is uh, gonna do some work. Yeah. And then Torque will come up. Yeah, we got that. Let me try again. Yeah, he says that because he didn't take him out. It's, it's, it's that move is intended to actually take down the uh, the enemy, but but you know sometimes it don't work that way. Let's just have. Oops! <laughs> Damn it! What kind of achievement for it? So that's fine. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. Now let's see if we can just uh, get lucky with a shot. Whoopie, look at that! Boy, this is the easiest... <laughs> what the heck is going on? Alright, now we gotta hurry up, because on the right-hand side, you can see on the left-hand side as well, we have enemies that are gonna be approaching here very shortly. I should take us a minute to take a minute to go ahead and, and get everybody healed up, but we're gonna try to get... to get our loot and scoop. They don't get a move right away, though, so I should be able to swoop in there and get that and then come back out. For example... Oh, that sucks. Okay, that kind of puts a little bit of a damper on things. What can you do, bud? Okay. We could try to take somebody out, but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. Let's try dead eye somebody. Let's try dead eye this guy for for a gib. Oh, man! God, you would think I was streaming this thing with this kind of luck. Uh oh, poison, poison! I know it's poison everywhere, but they'll be fine, right, guys? Uh, I see. Chad does. Does Chad have something to heal himself up? Let me see. Preparation Overwatch. No, he does not. Okay, his shield. But just whoop de do. We'll go and move him some cover here. Hmm. Can we reach over here? No. Okay. Yeah, he's still gonna be poisoned. I do have to take care of that. It's gonna be a problem. Because he is, he's not going to just like magically stop being poisoned. He's going to stay poisoned. Okay, so I see I have mm, not a whole lot of options here. I'm not going to take that shot because that's a little too risky. So what I'll do is I'll put a kinetic shield on somebody else that's exposed. Actually, no, I'll put a kinetic shield on uh, on me. There we go. Now let's get you out of there. Can you make it? Damn, I'm so used to having Zephyr. Zephyr will make it all the way down there and then halfway back. Let's see if we can get a shot here. 59%, 41%, tongue pull on a bad guy maybe, then bind him up. 75%, okay, this is my only option, let's do it. 75%, boy, camera really likes this angle. Now we'll bind him up, now I'll lock him up for the rest of the turn. There we go. That's why we put the kinetic shield on him. That could have been, that could have been the end right there for that guy. But he got another charge, boy! All right, cool. Still can't make it in one go. So let's instead have her take cover. Now we're gonna have more enemies coming, so I can go like this and exceed the blue line, but that would eat into my action points. So I don't necessarily want to do that because then I'll be stuck out here in the middle. I'd rather use uh, Blue Blood, who's coming up next, but I can do some kind of protective work here. Let me go ahead and go down here, do some healing, especially for Cherub over there. This is not really a high, like, just, like I'm not really terribly worried necessarily because I only have one person that's down on health, and I have Terminal, and Terminal's really good support. There we go. And then it's fine. Enemy activity. There we go. Then he's within range, so we could get this. Pick that up. Not even gonna worry about that just yet. I'm gonna close chest. Now we're gonna see where the exit is. I'm guessing it's where he came from. In and out, right? Uh, there it is. Now we gotta make it back home. Then we good. Should I take a shot? No, because this guy's gonna come out of here when reinforces enemy on the right hand side. So we actually still have a little bit of time, but he will be stuck out here if I can't get him back. So I might as well go ahead and put him over here. Get him somewhat safe. Probably put a kinetic shield on him or something. 
Let me see. Can he throw a kinetic shield from there? Sure can. So there we go. Throw a kinetic shield on this guy. Then we're gonna walk Cherub right out. Ah, uh, close to. We'll get everybody pretty close to out. Except for you, actually. Mm, we'll sustain the bind. Still won't be in trouble after this. They can still make that run. Let me see, can you make that run? Oh, I can't see it because I have, I'm in a bind right now, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll just keep choking them out, it's fine. <laughs> mm hmm Oh boy, he's charging it up! I, I want so badly to go out there and just wreck somebody's face with that ability. All right, let's keep moving, let's keep moving. Let me see. Wow, it's oh, it's because he has to go around, is that it? Oh, she does have to go all the way around. That's annoying. Annoying. Okay, well, we'll just do it uh, as far as she can go. Just go for distance. She's got a kinetic shield anyway, so... Still bound. Enemies coming out. Now, he has a pretty cool ability, or a, a upgrade on his tech tree, where... If he if he uses move as his last uh, action, then he will immediately go into Overwatch mode, which is basically you know uh, watching for uh, for enemies and just firing at the first available enemy. Let me see. So blue blood, you're gonna run for it. It's gonna take a couple turns here. There we go. Let me see. So we can go over here. And even while we're here, before we leave, we can expend all of our action points, and the ability to leave will still be av available to us. So, like for example, we could give uh, Twerk a uh, uh, let's go ahead and give her a kinetic shield. This Twerk might be out there a little bit longer than everybody else, maybe. Let's see, and that's pretty much it. Yep, that's all we could do. Cool, you back. That was weird. Oh, so, uh, I keep forgetting where I'm at here. Stay by, done. Now, do I still have the ability to move? Nope, okay. Certain abilities will say, this will end your turn. I just never read that part. I don't know what he shot at because the camera's weird, but... Ah, shield locked. Blue blood, uh, grazed. That's a hefty boy. Oh, I really wish that camera would show us what's going on over there, man. Jeez! All right, get over here. Get everybody secure. Let me see. Axe is available. Let's go ahead and uh, safeguard to. I don't matter really. Sure. Actually, can I cooperate? I should check for cooperation. Actually, you back. You back. You go, go, go. Good. It's a lot of enemies. And you know, this does get pretty nasty if there's just one if there's just one good guy on the field and a whole bunch of baddies because they will uh, focus fire. So well Torx next, so I'm guessing Torx's gonna be able to make that sprint. I hope. I don't think there's anything else that blue blood could do for for Torque from here. Nope, good. Leave. Now, if Tork, you know, like I said, if you lose one major character, or one character out here, um, then that's it, the mission's over. There is no, you know, oh, you lost somebody in the field of battle, or whatever. Nothing like that. All right, here we go. Rating, excellence. Terminal, lightly wounded, lightly wounded, wounded, lightly wounded. Now, if any of them had fallen, it would have been gravely wounded. Uh, if they were sustained, of course. So it says, from six captured enemies, you earn tw 20 intel. Like I said, it doesn't matter if it's six or 20, you always get 20 intel. It's ridiculous. Work my ass off for them captures, man. All right, here we go. This thing's gonna back in at 20 frames per second. I don't know, I think it's I think it's a 24 frames per second. Uh, it's a stylistic choice or something, because every time, no matter what I put the gra graphic settings to, that in the intro outro never gets smoother. It's really weird. Uh, so here's what I got. I got one advanced auto loader, just like I talked about before. Two unrest, uh, negative two unrest, and then evidence collected. And then if there's anything else that was happening, uh, like if you have people in training or whatever, it would show you over here. It would say, oh, so and so got out of training and all that good stuff. So it's Saturday. Oh, come on. What happened? Oh. The 
mercenaries. Oh, it's story stuff. Shh, 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 shh. Oh, hey. <laughs> what a perfect way to end. Oh my gosh. Wow, that's so funny. Well, that's the second time it's crashed on me. The first time was when I first played. But you know what? We're going to leave it in because, uh, well, because it happened. But overall, I mean, two crashes in the span of 32 hours is pretty good. Um, you know, at that point, I'm fairly certain it's saved. But at that point, you would get back to your squad and you can make Matt go through and, and do everything that I did at the beginning. You would do again. And that's the typical setup for every turn based strategy game is you spend a lot of time managing your squad or managing your people. And then you go into a fight and then you come out and then you make a couple more tweaks and then you do the same thing again. Uh, and that's part of the fun. It's, you know, taking your, uh, you're taking your, your mechs or your squad or your personnel or whatever it is from whatever game you're playing and really tailoring them to fit your, uh, your, I mean, your tactical strategies that you come up with. And, you know, Chimera Squad is, is, it's a good game. Like it's a good turn-based shooter. It's not, you know, it's not groundbreaking by any means, but it's good. I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying it thoroughly. I'm probably going to go through and try to finish it off, uh, especially after Gears Tactics comes out. But, uh, but you know, expect a little bit of Gears Tactics just like this, by the way, because I do love turn base and I don't feel like I play them enough <laughs> with oxygen included and everything taking up all my time. Uh, but yeah, I, I do want to get in there and play a few more and, and just kind of open my, open my feel, open my, uh, you know, my, my, my scope a little bit. So that's it guys. My name is Mike B. Thank you so much for hanging. I know it's been a while for one of these, but you know, time is, uh, while everybody else in the world seems to have all this extra time on their hands, I actually ended up with less, <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. This game is called XCOM Chimera Squad, currently available on Steam for $19.99. If you get it before May 1st, you can get it for $9.99. Easily the best turn-based strategy game for under $10. No question. No question whatsoever. I guess I'll go ahead and restart this too. Jeez, everything. Everything. God. Have a good night, guys. See ya.